low. Uh, so those are for uh, starting uh, uh, data scientists or uh, data uh, engineers. But uh, I mean, experienced data scientists or data engineers can get uh, paid as high as you know six-digit uh, salary uh, figures. You know, but of course they have already several years um, of experience. So from what I'm seeing right now, though, data scientists are getting paid more than uh, data engineers. Okay. Doesn't mean that they they have that they bring more value, they bring different values to an organization. Can data science bring us abroad for a living? Yes, very much. There's actually an increased uh, demand, not just for data scientists, but data engineers uh, as well. Okay. okay, so I just put it here, para masagot yung question, but I hope that you actually stay in the Philippines, uh, you know, to really do um, analytics. Uh, because special in situations right now, we need very, very good analytics. The 21st century skills are, uh, well, as I mentioned, these are not just soft skills anymore, um, but really the skills that are kind of very hard to teach and we need to learn uh, them from uh, early uh, on in our lives. Okay, let's go back to Menti. I have some questions uh, for you. Um, basically, which of these 10, 10 competencies are needed by each of the five analytics job families. Okay, go back to Menti. Uh, first question, data steward, if I'm not mistaken. So among the four skills, what's the skill that is mostly for data stewards? I think they discussed that in previously. Okay, data stewards, data governance. Again, if you uh, if you look into managing uh, data, data security, ethics, that's part of data governance. That's the skill uh, most needed by data stewards. Next, uh, skill needed by data engineers. Siyempre, tinangkal ko yung data engineering competency. So what's the skill needed most by data engineers, apart from data engineering? Stat, visualization, algorithms, or computing? On guys, data engineers, they don't need to know methods and algorithms. Scientists. So programming among these four skills is needed by uh, data engineers. Okay, next, data scientists. Which of the four? Naglalag hindi niya tang Okay, statistical techniques, visualization, domain knowledge, data governance. Of course, statistical uh, techniques. So, uh, data scientists really, really need to be very good in math and stat. Okay, that's a key uh, competency ng data scientists. Four, functional analysts. Ano yung key competency ng functional analyst? Okay, definitely domain knowledge. When you say domain knowledge, they have the understanding of the business, they have the understanding of the industry. The domain knowledge, again, HR, finance, marketing, sales, operations, uh, logistics, supply, etc. Okay, so that's the main skill of functional analysts. Next, uh, analytics managers. Sanyo highest proficiency nila. Okay, it's operational um, analytics. Operational analytics again is operationalizing analytics, which means they they need to take care of, they need to look into the end-to-end -end, um, delivery of analytics uh, initiatives. So, nagbago na ba? 
Bago na. Okay. That's our new uh, leaderboard. So the AAP Professional Maturity Model, the Analytics Association of the Philippines Professional Maturity Model is the key message in uh, week two. As you will see here, for each of the 10 uh, competencies, may strength na kailangan i-develop for each of the analytics uh, job families. Data stewards, most of them are in the business uh, skills. Data engineers, definitely data engineering and uh, computing. Data scientists, a lot of those uh, research, statistical techniques, methods and algorithms, and then siya. Functional analysts, most again on the business skills, those first four. Managers, as you will see, uh, strength is on uh, the business skills, but they also need to know the basics of all of the technical skills. So, medyo maraming kailangan i-develop ang analytics managers because their role is to know what each of um, the his or her team members are delivering to the project. If an analytics manager does not know the basic of statistics, hindi niya maintindihan yung ginagawa ng data scientist. If the analytics manager does not know, you know how data engineers move data from one place to another, uh, using data engineering skills, he, that data that analytics manager would not know what the data engineer is doing. Okay, so medyo mas marami talagang kailangan pag-aralan ang um, analytics uh, manager. So in the Philippines, where have we actually applied uh, the the framework, and who actually uses the the framework? So definitely, these are for you, you know, for us practitioners, learners. If we want to know which path we want to take. We use the professional maturity model to know where we st our strengths are and align our strengths to the competencies na kailangan ng bawat analytic job families. Let me just go back there. I mean, if you are good in math and stat, then yes, proceed with uh, being a data scientist. If you are good in programming, computer science, information technology, yes, uh, go for your path of data. Uh, engineers. If you're more inclined in um, office operations, organization operations, uh, the functions of businesses, be a functional uh, analyst. If you want, um, if you're really into project management, you know, uh, you find joy in delivering successful projects, end-to-end -end projects, be an analytics uh, manager. So for us practitioners, yan nagamit talaga nung uh, framework. Okay. Uh, HR uh, has been also, can actually also use the, the competencies of people. So, in addition, um, functions diba, that are done by HR. And they can use this to evaluate the performance of the employees. So, in companies such as mine, in Teradata and PointWest, uh, I, was, I mean, I came from PointWest as well, it's a local. Uh, ITBPO company, we've actually used uh, the the framework uh, to to give a career path to our data scientists and data engineers in uh, the organization. Okay, so we actually modified uh, the professional maturity model to coincide with the performance management practices of our organizations. Okay, hiring managers can also use. Uh, the professional maturity model when they create job posts. Okay, so when you see job openings in LinkedIn or in Job Street, uh, you can use the competencies, the proficiency levels, the job uh, to create your job descriptions when you post job openings. Okay, uh, so minsan actually ngayon, well, ngayon then you'll see uh, if you go to LinkedIn, search for roles in data engineers and data scientists. And dami yung makitang parang halo-halo na lahat ng skills. They're looking for everything in a specific role. Uh, we're also actually educating hiring managers to say, hey, there are actually five analytics job families. It's impossible for you to find all of these skills in one person. So it's going to be very difficult for you to get a person uh, to hire if you're going to look for this. So unti-unti namin in-introduce sa kanila yung competency framework so that they can fix the job descriptions that they are posting.
lastly, educators can use uh, the pro, uh, the competency framework to know what subjects you know they can teach and when to teach it. So, uh, the Masters in Applied Business Analytics in UANP and the newly formed Bachelors of Science in Data Science in UANP actually use the framework to craft their curricula for those um, undergrad program and master's program. Sparta definitely is something that was designed using the competency framework. Yeah, you have those pathways. So there's actually six pathways because we introduced a an entry level uh, data associate pathway, if I'm not mistaken. But all of the courses uh, that you see as part of Project Sparta was designed using the competency framework. So again, the framework is not just for practitioners, but also for HR, hiring managers, and uh, educators. So let's go to the questions, okay? So aside from APEC project there, so again, APEC project there was the uh, project um, uh, that we participated uh, in Singapore about four years ago, uh, where we came up with the professional maturity model. Are there any other standards that we can adopt for aligning our analytics competencies and professional maturity model? Yes, so actually APEC project there uh, came from studies based in North America and in Europe in Project Edison. So those two uh, are also standards that you can adopt. But if you're talking about adoption here in the Philippines, we are promoting already the AAP professional maturity model. Uh, because that's something that we have already adopted for the Philippines market and is still aligned with the global standards. Okay. Right, next question. So I am planning to apply for a job in the field of IT. So how can the functional analyst or HR determine Isaiah So how can the functional analyst or HR determine the specific role that they always wanted? So using the competency framework, they can use the proficiency levels to craft the job descriptions. Okay. So again, it's something that we are educating HR and hiring managers so that maayos yung pagkakakraft nila ng job descriptions. As an applicant, how will I convince management that I have those specific skills? So look back again with the competency framework. Um, provide evidences that you have actually done um, the the proficiencies or the skills required in the uh, framework. What's your advice to aspiring analytics professionals to succeed in the field of analytics? So use the professional maturity model to craft a career path for you. Uh, look and search for online uh, learnings that will allow you uh, to build knowledge on those proficiency um, levels and also look into uh, areas where you can um, uh, have experiences. Because it's very important you have not just the knowledge but also the experience uh, to back it up, okay? So again, use the, the maturity, professional maturity framework. If you have, a, okay, uh, in, go back to week two if you want to review your specific uh, proficiency levels. Uh, in week two also, there's a Google form where you can find all of the, well, a snapshot of the, the definitions of the proficiencies per level, per competency, per analytics job role, okay? And you can save that as a PDF para, ano, uh, you, you can have a reference for that. So there's definitely a lot of use for the uh, maturity framework. What are the best practices to become a good uh, data analyst? So again, just go through the competency framework, look into uh, the, the skills that are needed for you. For a data analyst, it's really the business domains. So look into that, uh, check all the proficiency uh, level descriptions, build knowledge on that, build experience uh, on that. So what subject topic should faculty and students start with? Okay, so good question. As I mentioned, the professional maturity framework uh, has been used by educators as well. Uh, if you want, you can go to Project Sparta 
uh, again, Project Sparta was designed already uh, based on the framework. We actually advise faculty and students, you know, if you want to build a curricula, uh, look into the various pathways that Project Sparta has created. It's very good. It's a very good outline for creating a curricula for your uh, schools and for your subjects in school. Will I be at a disadvantage without a formal math, a highly technical background degree? Okay, so again, just going back to the competency framework. If you want to be a data scientist, then you definitely need to have math and stat. So if you want to be a data scientist, then you will be at a disadvantage if you don't have formal training in math and stat. Uh, but if you're going to go for the other pathways, then it's okay. If you're going for the path of the data engineer, yes, you'll be at a disadvantage if you don't have a formal technical background because that's the competency needed by data uh, engineers. But again, for other pathways, uh, it's okay. okay. It's not that you cannot learn uh, math, of course, you can learn math, you can learn stat, even you know after uh, uh, undergrad uh, degree. But you just, I mean, if you really want to be a data scientist or a data engineer, then you really need to develop these uh, competencies. So again, look at the competency framework to know uh, what skills and competencies you need to uh, develop. Can data scientists also act as a data analyst since the course offered to data analysts are taken in data science? So yes, um, one of the skills actually needed by data scientists uh, is an understanding of the domain, okay? So let's take an example lang nito yung COVID-19 natin. So you've probably seen, you go to the AAP Facebook group, ganyan, and dami nagpo-post ng mga data visualizations. And usually data scientists are coming up uh, with those. Uh, we've actually uh, called the attention of some of our data scientists um, kasi they are posting things, pero wala naman silang background sa diseases and, and epidemiology. Okay. So that's actually something critical for data scientists to know uh, yung business uh, domain, so yung industry knowledge. So it's a key part because data scientists uh, need to also know that uh, you know domain, need to have domain expertise. So yes, data scientists can also act as uh, data analysts because they need to have that domain uh, knowledge as well. Any other questions? How does the career pathway advance? If I'm a data scientist and I want to advance my career, does it mean my next step is to become an analytics manager? Okay, you can actually advance careers in two ways. Okay, um, you can actually go um, horizontal, which means uh, you can go from one analytics job family to another, or you can actually deepen your skill in the vertical. Naman. So you can be a data scientist for all your life and you can still advance your career. In Teradata, for example, uh, and in Point West, they actually made three proficiency levels. Uh, you own um, uh, professional framework is because each of the proficiency level is an, another uh, level in the career ladder. Okay. So if you're level one, you're a beginner, level two, intermediate, level three, uh, you're an expert already. So in Teradata, for example, in Point West, we use that as uh, to advance careers of our data scientists. So we have data scientists and data engineers who have stayed as data scientists and data engineers. They started as junior data scientists, some are principal data scientists and chief data scientists already. But for some, they, they wanted to see um, everything, so they want to kind of learn everything, so they've taken the path of analytics managers. Okay? So, two ways for you to advance your uh, career. Oh, dami questions at all. We too. So, will I be able to develop the needed competencies for the pathways I was aiming at in a span of a year and through virtual assessments? What can I do to supplement the lectures for retention since these are new information? So how will I be able? Okay, this is also about um, you taking on this online course uh, platform. Okay. First question, you cannot, and I'm going to be very blunt, okay? You cannot um, advance 
careers in analytics or in any profession if you're just going to do online trainings okay and that's why we have these web conferences that's why you know as alan mentioned we have programs like hackathons or projects for um uh projects for lgus okay you need to apply all of these uh learnings okay? another point i've seen some learners who finished SP 101 in a span of a day, okay? You cannot learn, you know, this uh, in just, well, yes, you can finish the course, but the question is, have you actually learned something? Okay, you, you won't be able to learn that. Actually, kaya din namin in space out yung mga one hour modules into five weeks because we want for you to absorb those uh, lessons. You don't get extra points for completing the course the fastest, okay? So we, we want for, for you to absorb all of those learnings. Um, so to supplement the lectures, read, uh, search, uh, the Harvard Business Review, yung mga links na nandoon sa, uh, sa SP 101, go to LinkedIn, uh, take other online uh, courses. I actually appreciate those questions posted in Courseback where they say, okay, I've read this somewhere and medyo iba siya doon sa napag-aralan, can I make a comment on that? Okay? I, I like those questions very much because it shows that you're actually going through other uh, materials that's available out there and actually challenging din naman or questioning what we have taught in SP101. That's very good because I actually also learn uh, from those. Um, there are a lot of competitions, hackathons that are available uh, out there, you know, as you develop your skills, if you're, once you've completed, say, Excel or R uh, or Python, okay, so use those um, um, available um, uh, resources in the web, Kaggle, yung mga hackathons na yon, for you to really uh, learn those uh, skills, okay? So, just you know, um, relying on the platform will not be enough. You need to gain more experience outside uh, and then you need to gain experience. If you find something outside uh, that is kind of different from what I've learned or additional learns, post that in course back. Uh, as most of you know, I answer almost everything, you know, posted in the discussions in SP101. Okay, what would be the most beneficial in analytics? I think there's a question on uh, post uh, whether it's an MBA or a master's in IT. Again, depend on the role that you are performing. Okay? If you're a data engineer, you want to be a data engineer, go for a master's in IT. If you want to, to uh, um, proceed with an analytics manager path, get an MBA. If you want uh, to progress your careers in data science, go for a master's uh, in data science. So there are schools right now who are offering a master's program in science in data science. AIM is providing that. UP is also providing that uh, for the technical courses. And in IT, uh, I know Mapua is offering that. Ateneo is offering that uh, as well. And then for business degrees, uh, UANP, as I mentioned, is offering the master's in applied business uh, analytics. So again, depending on your role, you have a master's program that is applicable for you. Okay, so that's it for uh, week two. So I'm seeing questions in the chat. Let me just finish all of these. Then we'll go back to the chat and those questions that you posted in uh, Menti. Okay, uh, week three is about Delta Plus model and the organizational uh, maturity model. I think we'll start off with a quiz again. Just what the, this is fill in the blanks. Let me see if you can remember what is D E L T A. Okay, first one. So, what is D? Integrated, high quality, easily accessible. Wrong spelling, wrong, guys.
guys. Integrated, high quality, easily accessible data. Okay, next. So e. So managing analytics resources in a coordinated fashion across the, what's the E? E stands for enterprise. Yes. Okay. Let's go. What is L? Strong, committed, that understands the importance of analytics. Okay, so leadership. Okay. So we're going to accept leader or leaders as well. So leadership, leader. Okay, next, what is T? The first T, plus. So the core of an analytics roadmap. Okay, targets. So we'll be accepting targets or target. Okay, so the more goals to organization. Last two words. Mababa. Nurturing high performing AP. Ingat the spelling. So analytics professional, analytic professional, analytics practitioner. All right. Okay. So that's the five. So when we look at oh man, pala leaderboard. Let's find out the leaderboard. Ah. Well, pers Dr. Evil Paren. Stop nothing. Okay, so this is the Delta Plus model. So in week three, we discussed when we look at the maturity of an organization, uh, we look at this uh, seven elements. Okay, it started off with the first five: so data, enterprise, leadership, targets, and analytics professionals. But as technology advances and uh, methods in analyzing uh, data has increased. You know, the proponents of the Delta model added, you know, components on technology and analytical uh, techniques. That's why that there is now the Data Plus uh, model. So when we measure the organizational uh, maturity model, we look into five levels. Okay? The very first one, uh, when there's no analytics being done at all in the organization, then the organization is analytically uh, impaired. Okay? When you have pockets of analytics done in your uh, organization, meaning a certain department is the only, uh, the only one uh, doing analytics for the organization, it means that they are localized lang yung analytics. So pockets of analytics lang are being done. If uh, there is a conscious effort in the organization to bring all of the analytics effort across the organization into one, then the organization is starting to aspire to become an analytics organization. So that's stage three. So there are there's the analytical uh, aspirations. Okay. Stage four is when you actually have now integrated all of this. You have very strong commitment from leadership to proceed with uh, being an analytic company. 
most organizations would actually just stop at this stage four, you know, being an analytical company or being an analytical um, organization, okay? Uh, because they are now seeing the benefits of analytics within their organization. But if they want to use data information to be a strategic asset for them, and they want to be uh, a market leader for their business, then they aspire for a stage five, uh, and where they can use data to become analytics uh, competitors uh, as well. Okay, so these are the five stages of uh, organizational maturity that we went through in week three. Okay, so how is it being used? This is a study done by the uh, International Institute of Analytics uh, in 2016. They conducted a survey from 50 industry leading uh, companies. So for each of the, the industries, uh, they have a kind of a questionnaire similar to what you've used uh, in week three, and they assess you know, uh, the maturity levels of the industries. Uh, the Analytics uh, Association of the Philippines is going to start a similar study uh, here in uh, the Philippines. But if you're going to ask me uh, right now, nasa yung maturity ng mga companies, it's pretty close uh, to what we are seeing here. Definitely mga financial services and retail uh, here in the, the Philippines, medyo mataas na yung maturity nila, including telco. Um, and... Uh, unfortunately, but the things healthcare, it's kind of similar uh, to this survey, major lagging behind the healthcare uh, industry natin uh, here in, in the Philippines as far as analytics maturity uh, is concerned. So again, this is something, this is a study uh, that we would like to be, uh, we would like to do also uh, here in uh, the Philippines. So by filling out the survey also in week three, it actually helps us create kind of a a baseline uh, for how you think our industries are mature uh, as far as uh, analytics uh, is uh, concerned. Okay, so let's go to this, week three questions. Uh, ito pertaining to technology. So what kind of software programming languages are, are needed? So there's actually a lot. So databases, definitely the extract transform load uh, technologies, uh, SQL, R, Python, Excel. So if you look at the learning pathways, if you look at, there are certain subjects or courses uh, that pertain to programming languages. So in Project Sparta, you will learn some of these softwares and programming languages uh, as well. How do you organize or create a data analytics team in an organization? Actually, this is going to be discussed in week four, but uh, you can start first with a functional analyst and a data scientist, you know, if you want to start or kickstart a uh, an analytics initiative or a data analytics team in your organization, you need to find someone who is very knowledgeable about your business, uh, about your industry, and partner him or her with a very good uh, data scientist that will kickstart your uh, analytics project or your data analytics team in your organization. It is important, however, that you have a very strong uh, champion in the leadership team who will support your data analytics team from the start of, you know, building this data analytics team in your uh, organization. Okay, can I cite some local business organizations that are analytically mature? Uh, I can, but I probably won't. <laughs> there are certain uh, consulting companies already in the Philippines who conduct uh, the same assessment, but because of non-disclosure agreements, we cannot really mention the names of the local businesses. Um, but from what we have gathered so far, I mean, as far as uh, you know, the work that I've done in the industry, uh, there are certainly uh, industries, uh, particularly in financial services, in retail, in airlines, in telco, who have reached uh, level four and level five um, already, okay? Um, so, may, uh, naman, may mga certain organizations, uh, local organizations that are using analytics 
very well already uh, in their companies. Do we have a governing and certifying body that helps assess the organizational maturity of different industries in the Philippines? There is none. That is hopefully what we'd like to do in the Analytics Association um, of the, the Philippines. Okay, so apart from us uh, teaching practitioners, uh, we are also um, kind of educating organizations with this organizational maturity model so we can start, you know, uh, assessing their uh, maturity uh, in these uh, components. Okay, week four, uh, an organizational strategy roadmap for uh, analytics. So actually, we're kind of very happy <laughs> with what we did for here. Hopefully for those who have taken week four, uh, you've seen uh, the story of um, Ali Maria, where we kind of put everything that you've learned from weeks one, two, and three for a um, good uh, example or use case of how we go uh, and do an end-to-end -end, um, analytics uh, project. Okay, let's go to Menti uh, for some uh, true or false questions. Let's see uh, if you recall what you've learned, at least for those who have finished uh, week four already. So these are just true or false questions. So analytics project should be aligned to the organization's vision and mission for the leadership team to see the value in them. Excellent. Everyone is correct. Okay. Um, if you want your leadership team to take note of your analytics initiatives, the objectives of your project should be aligned to the objectives of your organization. Very good. Second question. For an organization to realize the full potential of analytics, and it should be driven by IT. Correct answer is false. Actually, that's one of the essay questions, okay? Uh, analytics should be driven by the business. Okay? Analytics is not about, it's not just about technology, but what is the impact of analytics to the business? So, dapat business driven uh, siya, okay? Next question. You need people in all roles to kickstart your analytics projects. So data steward, data engineer, data scientist, functional analyst, analytics managers. So correct answer is false. You can at the minimum, when you start your analytics projects, you need first, again, uh, someone who knows the industry very well or your business very well. You need a very good functional analyst and partner that functional analyst with a very good data scientist. With those two, you can already kickstart your analytics project. But if you want to operationalize your analytics projects, then you need to have all of those roles. Uh, last question for week four. You need a leader who will champion building a data-driven culture in your organization. Everyone got it right. Yes. Okay. Um, you need someone, at least, uh, you know, a very senior leader uh, who will believe in uh, analytics and who will champion whatever you're going to do. If you don't have this, then it's going to be very difficult, you know, uh, for, for you uh, to build a data-driven culture in your organization. You can influence, definitely. You can talk to your uh, leaders. Or you can find someone who can champion you on uh, this. Okay, leaderboard. Nice. Ooh, nagbago na ang ating leaderboard. Good, cool. Okay, so this is kind of a roadmap. Uh, again, go just going through 
the five stages of analytical maturity in organization. This is kind of a roadmap that you'd like uh, to take. Uh, and this was also kind of discussed in week four. So you start with uh, stage one. You don't have, uh, you're not doing any analytics at all. You can go either full steam ahead, which is on your left side. Um, usually you do this if you really have a very strong champion leader in your organization who already believes in analytics. The path on the right side is where you want to do a proof of concept first. You kind of want to prove to your leadership that yes, analytics will work. So the, the, the right side is more, okay, let's prove it first. So you go to localized analytics. You select a business unit, you select a department in your organization to do analytics first, okay? If you're in this path, it's very important that you succeed because this is a proof of concept, a proof of value. If you fail, you go into that red stage, okay? Your leadership will not, you know, uh, believe in you anymore. They will kind of lose hope that analytics can really make a difference. So it's important that you succeed with that proof of concept. If you succeed in that, then you go into the full steam ahead where um, your organization will bring together all of these analytics initiatives, strive to become a little company. Again, they can stop there or they want to continue to becoming analytics uh, competitors and use data as a strategic uh, competitive advantage uh, in the market. Okay. So let's do questions. Can a single person do multiple analytics role for an organization? Yes, it's possible. Is it recommended? No, it's not. Okay. Uh, while there are certain people, we call them kind of unicorns in the analytics industry, who has the competencies in all of the analytics job families, they're very good in it. It's still recommended that multiple people uh, do the roles. Why? Because there need to be some check and balances uh, as well. If you look into that data value chain, each of these steps in the transformation needs to be validated by a different person. Uh, how sure are we that the data engineers have done correctly uh, the consolidation of the data? The data stewards would have to check that. How sure are we that the uh, data scientists created the right insights, the correct insights, the function analysts have to validate that. If it's being done by one person, it's, you know, it's kind of very hard to disprove yourself. Right? So you need other persons to actually work in an analytics uh, project. Uh, okay, so the next questions are kind of applications of uh, analytics in various industries. So this was what I've uh, gathered. So in all of these, basically you really start with, I have a question first, okay? What is it that you really want to achieve in your organization? Whether it's a government agency, whether it's a, in a private sector, whether it's in the, the academy. And uh, let's see if there's going to be an answer or a solution to that, that can be answered by data. So government agencies, I mean, let's start na lang with COVID-19. There's a, a lot of possible applications um, already. Uh, if we could have better uh, collected information about everyone in the barangay, then the disbursement, for example, of uh, the amelioration program is going to be easier. Okay? Uh, if um, um, we have um, better data or we have increased testing, which means that we have more data that will that is coming in, we could have better plan for this. Okay, so damning applications. Um, we've been working with, uh, prior to uh, the quarantine, we've been working with Pasig City, for example, to look into uh, uh, better to improve their healthcare system, uh, the traffic situation uh, in uh, Pasig City, garbage collection, how can we optimize that? Those are questions that we can answer with data. So, you know, as far as LGUs are concerned or government agencies, you know, just start by asking a question and see whether data can have the answer uh, for that. Engineering and maintenance, project management. Okay. Um, in, as if I'm, uh, 
understand this correctly, you probably have inventory, you have machines uh, in your organization, uh, and you're talking about um, the maintenance of those uh, machines, or even vehicles, for example. So for any organization uh, that has this, there's actually an analytics solution called preventive maintenance uh, op uh, pre and predictive asset optimization. Okay, so you want to use data to know how much an equipment has been used, uh, has been used already, so that we know when it is going to break down. We can predict when an equipment is going to break down, and once we know when it's going to break down, then we do preventive maintenance uh, already. So we don't wait until something gets uh, broken before we actually even uh, prevent it from being broken. Okay. Um, in engineering, we look into, uh, again, the, the, the equipment that we have, the, the manufacturing things that we uh, have, uh, and see uh, when we can prevent this. Okay. In project management, if we do status reporting, that's descriptive analytics already. Uh, if you know uh, uh, what are the problems and uh, where we are seeing those problems uh, in project management, we can already prevent those things from um, happening. Uh, how should I best use analytics in the education sector? Can analytics also be applied in schools? Definitely yes. So again, start with questions. Like for example, uh, do I have enough students? Do I know with the grades coming along from, say, the first semester or for the first quarter, who is going to uh, fail or what is going to be my passing uh, percentage at the end of uh, the year? You now, start just by looking at the data that you already have for every student. Okay? Uh, from the very first time that they are in, collect that historical information. And you can, uh, it, with data you can already predict what's if a students going to pass um, or fail. Uh, enrollment status, for example. Do we have enough classrooms? Do we have enough uh, teachers? If you look at the trends on uh, enrollment, uh, see the popularity of uh, teachers, uh, then you'll be able to predict how many classes uh, you can schedule, how many classrooms you would need, how many facilities you would need. Again, start with questions. And uh, most of those questions will be answered with uh, data. What are the challenges of having data privacy policies in the organization? Okay, so we talk about uh, data privacy policies. Um, data privacy policies are actually there to protect, you know, the information of the people and uh, the, the customers. Uh, it is a challenge because uh, if you don't, uh, if you need uh, definitely those uh, types of information, uh, personal sensitive information, there are different layers of approvals that you would need. But that is important. Okay, You need to look at them as um, things that you need to do. Okay, It doesn't prevent you from doing good analytics. You just need to be careful on how you use those uh, data. Uh, I don't really want to call them workarounds to data privacy laws because you don't, we should not really be working around any law. You're not going to circumvent any law. You just need to find the best way uh, to uh, really do analytics. There are, there are uh, process where you can mask sensitive uh, information. Uh, there are tools that does that. Uh, if you don't need sensitive personal information, then don't, uh, then don't ask for that. But this is actually the role of the data steward. They need to know, they need to keep asking why you would need certain, some certain types of sensitive personal uh, information. So it's there, you know, it's a fact of life in uh, analytics. But uh, don't look at them as a disadvantage. It's more for us, to, uh, for, for you, uh, to know what is going to be uh, important for our uh, end users. How do you show uh, that data is being used ethically by an organization? And this is uh, hard, and, and this is the forte of data storage. Um, you need to really just be careful on how you analyze the data. 
And this is where, you know, the functional analysts really need to develop those uh, skills. Um, you need to look at every angle of the data. You need to make sure that whatever anal uh, analysis you come up with uh, removes the biases. Hopefully, you'll, you'll learn this in uh, future courses. Um, you need to uh, remove any forms of discrimination uh, in your data. Uh, you need to know more about uh, sizing uh, population. If you're, if you're, if you want to make a analysis of a wider population and you only have this amount of information, you need to have that skill that will say, okay, yes, whatever I collected is representative already of a bigger population. These things you would learn in statistics, okay? But you really just need to apply um, all of these uh, skills. Okay, last week, okay, uh, analytics for the people and the analytics ecosystem of the, the Philippines is week five. Okay, I think we'll start with some true or false questions. Okay, let's see if that's the case. Yeah, so we'll have, I guess, some true or false questions here. Analytics is fundamental to digital transformation, and digital transformation is all about technology. True or false? False. Digital transformation is all about people. Okay? People first, technology next. Greater good of society, learners. Next. To succeed, organizations must excel in all of these three. So Dr. Gina Ross in a video in week five talk about these three uh, business strategies. Okay, the answer is false, okay? So review the video um, again. Uh, it is saying that organizations must excel in one first, either one of these three, and then excel also in the other. It's kind of difficult to excel in both because they have different priorities, okay? Operational excellence, you're more into how uh, efficient you run your business. Customer intimacy, you're more focused with uh, the customers. You create products, but the features of your products or your services derive from uh, the, the, the people. So you kind of ask them first, uh, what do they need before you create a product? Product leadership, you are very sure about what your product is. You put in all of the features in your product and then you sell it. So product leadership, for example, are uh, technology companies such as Apple uh, or Samsung, for example. So when they create the new iPhones or the new uh, Galaxy phones, okay, they don't really ask people that, that uh, you know, what features they'd like. Uh, they would really just okay, I know this, I'm going to remove the, uh, the three millimeter uh, headphone jack, diba? Di naman tayo tinanong, diba, na, na mga phones na to suddenly USB-C na lang lahat ng mga, ano, ng mga headphones na uh, natin available. Uh, but they are still considered as product leaders kasi susunod lang tayo sa kung anong nilabas sila. Customer intimacy, on the other hand, they kind of ask first what we want before they create products. So consulting uh, organizations, IBM, Accenture, Mediterranean you know, Data Point West, these organizations would really just get first the feedback of the, the customers before they provide a service uh, to them. Operational excellence, mostly in manufacturing, in uh, in the back offices, the mga banks, the details. Efficiency lang, how fast they can actually uh, produce the services uh, to their customers. So the goal here is to be very excellent in one, be a market leader in one, and then uh, be excellent also in the, the others. So review again the, the video of uh, Gina Ross there. Okay, next question. So in the digital age, the first question that we must ask is, what is our vision for improving the lives of our customers? Uh, 
excellent. So again, for the good of society, for improving the lives of our customers, that's really our focus. Okay? So everyone got that correct. Thank you, the board. I think that's the second to the last wish that we have. Okay, next. So, the Analytics Association of the Philippines is an industry association where we are striving to pull in together all of our practitioners, the service providers, the consulting uh, companies in analytics, the academe, and the, the government to build this analytics ecosystem of the Philippines for the improvement of local government units, uh, analytical organizations, and uh, building smart uh, cities. Okay. This is a study, uh, and you can find this in the Harvard Business Review. Just Google plotting the digital evolution index. This was studied in 2017. There was a question actually how far we are as a country in this uh, digital uh, evolution as compared to our neighbors in Southeast Asia. So the Philippines is there. Uh, we are in the breakout quadrant, meaning that you know that the horizontal axis is the rate of change in digital evolution. Uh, but the left side, uh, sorry, the, the y-axis is uh, our kind of a digital evolution index score uh, of the researchers from Harvard Business uh, Review. So we are there. It's good, actually. We're in the breakout session. It means that we are evolving. But if you look at uh, this, uh, our neighbors in Malaysia, uh, Indonesia are actually going now into the standout. We want to be in the standout uh, quadrant. Hong Kong is actually already there. I'm trying to find where Singapore is. It's not here. Okay, so if you want to know uh, more about this, uh, we'll post the link in um, in Sparta and Corp Bank and Facebook, or you can actually just Google this Digital Evolution Index 2017. So in the 2017 study, that's where we are We're in a good place, but we want to be in the standout uh, uh, quadrant. So week five question, so what are the digital capabilities? So apart from analytics, so we look into the internet of things, mobile uh, capability, autonomous vehicles. So these are really technologies that are, uh, you know, being uh, created, again, to improve um, our lives. Uh, nanotechnology, advances in healthcare. So yeah, there's a lot of digital uh, capabilities and analytics enables them. You know, because all of these technologies definitely depend on uh, data to, to work. Okay, why are data science courses not yet offered in all Philippine universities? This is a question that uh, we are hoping uh, to get uh, answered very soon. There, are, there have been discussions already with the Commission on Higher Education. Majority of the universities still require, uh, you know, some memorandum from CHED so that they can offer data science courses. For some schools who are uh, the regulated status, meaning they can offer courses, some of them are already offering courses. But for most, uh, there's some work already being done with CHED so that we can start offering analytics courses already. Uh, since analytics is not yet part of the senior high school curriculum, are there available materials? or strategies that could help teachers integrate analytics in senior high school subjects. Uh, I would say, you know, you know, just by taking Sparta, again, for educators, especially in the senior high school, uh, look into uh, the pathways defined already uh, in uh, Project Sparta so that you can start building this. Um, I would actually encourage na major focus din tayo on the critical, the 21st century skills those are very those are skills that are very hard to teach uh, pag medyo uh, mature na yung student uh, because those skills need to be learned you know from the very start um, the technical skills kasi the technology changes very fast uh, so in most cases uh, natututunan na siya once people are in companies um, already but the fundamentals 21st century 
math stat yun importante we need to um you know um have very good foundation uh, at the high school uh, level how long has sp 101 been going on will there be any changes in the course in the future is there an additional follow up course na miss yata naman ako sobra di naman joke uh sp 101 started in january if i'm not mistaken there are about 13 thousand enrollees already so uh i'm i thank everyone you know for participating in this will there be any changes uh you know as uh we as technology changes as thought leadership changes potentially it will change uh so for those who have completed uh that uh we'll have a uh, live call such as this para maging updated din naman kayo on any changes that's going to happen in SP 101. Uh, additional follow-up courses, of course, I mean, if you go through the pathways, uh, all of the, the courses naman uh, will build on what you are learning in SP 101. Kung ang tanong nyo is magiging SME pa ba sa other courses, yes, there's going to be another course that I'm going to teach. Uh, and hopefully after the, the quarantine, we'll start uh, production on, uh, on that. Okay. All right. Last set of questions. Okay. So, uh, so kami na Benny ni na Jackie ng Course Bank. And dami dami naming nakukuhang questions. And even during the registration, and daming questions. But if you've actually gone through the FAQs, you wouldn't answer ask those questions anymore. So, see, so yeah, let's test your knowledge of some of the uh, answers in the FAQs. Para kayo na din na sumagot nito. Let's see your knowledge on this. Let's start. Matutuwa si Benny nito. When will you get your certificate? Immediately after completing the course? Within 48 hours and getting a passing grade of 70? Or at SPO1, since it's an honor class, there's no certificate? Oh, wow. <laughs> okay. So you need to wait for 48 hours after completing the course, and you need to ensure that you get a passing grade of 70 for each, for the quizzes and uh, the essays. Make sure that you have green checks in your progress bar. Okay, again, FAQ, then 48 hours. Next question. Why does your assignment take too long to be graded? This is true for peer graded assignments. Because there are too many to assess and only S immigrates them. Okay, so I actually don't directly assess that you know we're calling about for 30,000 participants so in week four I'm going to pa ng 30,000 essays <laughs> and then in week five another 30,000 so we're doing peer graded assignment so it may take long because the courses are self-paced so uh, you need some peers also two peers at least two peers to actually grade uh, your essays and for other subjects uh, for your capstone okay so because the courses are self-paced even the the self-assessments are uh, the assessments are also uh, self-paced. If it takes too long, yes, push uh, uh, put a note in course bank discussion forum and we'll look into that. Pero wag naman yung kakasulat yung palang tatanyo kagad kung kailan ma assess. Okay. I think this is one of my more favorite questions. Why do we need to do peer graded assignments? Yes, it's all of the above. So there has been questions. Why can't it really just be multiple choice, um, be more uh, objective? Um, well, for me as an educator, uh, then, you know, uh, it's, it, it's actually important for you to show how you can apply all the learnings. 
uh, yes, madaling magkaroon ng multiple choice objective type of questions. But I want to hear from you also on what you're uh, learning. So you need to show how you apply your learning. Next is we also want you to develop your critical thinking communication skills. You need to also be able to see what other uh, learners are learning so you can learn uh, from them uh, as well. Being an analytics professional, you need to be able to uh, provide constructive criticisms on the work uh, of others. Um, if you look lang in say online conferences, uh, if you're not a member yet, go to Data Ethics PH, for example, or the meetups of the AAP, the R users uh, group. There's someone who's always going to be make presentations, but there are also people who's going to question um, those uh, presentations. That's a skill that you need to develop. So we'll start off. We'll start you off by you know just looking at you know the the essays of your uh, peers and uh, you know, provide constructive uh, feedback to them. Okay, um, again, uh, I'm only just one SME here. Uh, I cannot grade 30,000 essays for week four and another 30,000 for uh, week five. If, if I'm going to do that, it's going to take us forever to, to finish uh, this course. Okay, so just a note here though, if you feel that, na, question ko pala yun sa, ano, sa next, okay? So, uh, reserve po yung feedback na yan for the last question. What should you do if you fail the three attempts for the quizzes and uh, or you fail the essays? Nothing. Wala. Bagsak na talaga. Wait another year or send an email to DAP at learn at coursebank.ph. Yes, thank you. Okay, yes. So we'll always consider that. Okay, so just talking back again um, on the essays. So again, if you feel if you feel that you want, uh, if you deserve a higher grade or a passing grade in the essay, send it to us. Um, mabilis din naman akong magreply to on sa mga emails that the course bank team is sending uh, to me. Uh, and I'm actually kind of more critical in those uh, essays. So it's not always that I pass. Uh, there are certain cases that I think there's a few cases where I've actually failed. The essay mas mababa pa nga yung grade uh, na binigay ko. But I provide feedback and I give that uh, learner another question uh, to answer. Okay? So um, always look, uh, look into this. There's always a way for you to get a, a passing grade. Uh, there are some naman na ano, um, if you've received a passing grade, okay na yun. Uh, wag nyo nang, well, nasa nyo. If you want to achieve a perfect score, it's up uh, to you. It, you know, um, you can always, you know, send an email to to that at learnatcoursebank.ph if you want to really get a, a higher uh, grade. But again, the, the point here is that, yeah, we have all of these pieces, we all of these S, because we want you then a month to assess your um, learning. We want to find out how well uh, you understand the lessons and actually how well we delivered uh, the course. Usually through the quizzes and the essays, that's where we find out effective nga ba yung deliver namin ng, ng course. Okay, let's go to some of the Q&As here. So, ano, nandito na tayo sa mga Q&As and then I'll go to the chat. Uh, I think we have five minutes. How far is the Philippine analytics community versus a good analytics culture? We are, num if you're going to go through the stages, aspirations. We are really aspiring uh, to be a data-driven uh, country. That's why we have, you know, projects such as uh, Project uh, Sparta on that. Uh, what will happen after we finish our learning pathway? Go to the FAQ. <laughs> Okay, you'll find the answer to this. Okay, nas FAQ yung ato, di ba? Okay, um, you'll receive certificates at the end of each course. Uh, I forgot what you call that. Parang you're, you're going to graduate after you finish your pathway. FAQ. Uh, hindi naman. Nag-end ba? 
baka naputo lang siya internet connection. Is Project Spartan considered a master's degree? If you're talking about uh, a degree talaga, uh, and probably someone from Sparta can help me uh, on, on this, I don't think it's considered a master's degree. Uh, kasi right now, by definition, you know, the higher academic institutions uh, can only provide this, and this has to be recognized by CHED. Uh, you can definitely use the learnings uh, here so that you can have a preview of already of what, you know, masters in data science, applied business analytics, or data engineering uh, will be teaching you. Uh, realistically, unemployment will cost more monetary resources for the company. Are there roles that can be combined? Yes. So, uh, yes, this can be combined, as I mentioned, you know, functional analyst, data scientist. Um, one of the things that uh, companies can also do is outsource. Then, uh, din naman nabubuhay most of the, the BPO companies here. Uh, in an analytics, okay, if you really want to build an analytics organization, you need to have functional analysts, analytics managers, data scientists uh, in your organization. The junior data scientists, junior data engineers, sometimes the entire data engineering team, you can outsource that to a different company who does that. Once they have built your repository, yung data ninyo nandun na, and data is flowing um, palagi and uh, okay doon sa repository nyo, your functional anal analyst can just continue deriving insights out of those information. So you don't need that team of data engineers uh, anymore in your organization. So an option of um, hiring all of those in your company, uh, another option is to outsource you know, those types of uh, roles. What you don't want to outsource is uh, the strong knowledge of your industry because you should have that in your uh, organization. And see, uh, so sabi natin hindi. Uh, don't really uh, the mandatory service to DOST can we just post this nas FAQ din naman yata ito so I'll just uh, have uh, our course bank Sparta DOS team you know answer this if it's not yet in the FAQ but I know I've read this somewhere in the FAQ anymore if it's not that detailed we can ask them to to provide more detail on this very high. <laughs> okay, I'm uh, I mean, the 30,000 that we're training is probably not going to be enough for the next five years. Okay. Uh, everyone is going to digital transformation right now. And as I've said, analytics is the key enabler for uh, digital transformation. So we're going to be in demand. Uh, we're going to be uh, in demand for now. Okay. Yes, I would suggest focus at competencies where you are already good at. If you're a functional analyst, you uh, have, have very good stay at being a functional analyst. Math and science, data scientist, programmer, uh, computing, data engineer. Uh, it's okay for you to learn, um, but it's important for you to be uh, a master of something rather than be a jack of all trades. Can we, thank you. <laughs> so yeah, so we're actually discussing this with other uh, courses. And you know, we said that, you know, when we designed Sparta, uh, we, we wanted uh, to provide you with other forms of, uh, other uh, avenues for, for learning. So yes, we'll try, we'll try to do this for uh, other courses as well. Oh, benefit of analytics to the teachers. Um, you'll have, you'll, you'll be able to help your students learn more. Uh, I think yung when we, I talk to, to educators there, I mean, nandun naman talaga yung puso nila to help the students to pass, to graduate, you know, just by knowing 
uh, their educational history, the educational background of the students, you know, being able to predict whether they're going to pass or fail, and then creating preventive measures so that they can really pass at the end. I think yun gusto gusto naman talaga ng mga teacher. So yes, by using analytics, uh, you can you know do that uh, really. Uh, you can now then also probably customize your teaching so that you know if someone is going to be having a difficult time, you know, passing a particular subject, then you can create, you know, special subjects for that. There's a lot of things that you can do uh, for uh, with, with the data that you have. Uh, again, it's just important that you collect those information, uh, I mean, take into consideration data privacy law about your students. So I'm very passionate about that, very passionate about teaching. So I'm kind of surprised na may questions about how can analytics help the education sector? Uh, and actually the education sector, sa totoo lang, ito yung nahuhuli pa sa, sa analytics. Uh, passion talaga doon. So we'll, we'll do everything that we can, you know, to, to improve our education sector uh, for, for that. Uh, matatapos na. <laughs> okay. Uh, so we're actually kind of out of time. I have those questions We'll be posting. We'll, I'll I'll still be answering those questions in the chat, uh, and post them in uh, Course Bank and in our Facebook page. But it's lunchtime now. Just go through uh, again. These are uh, the the three things that we've learned in SP one hundred and one. Final leaderboard natin. Very nice. So congratulations to Nemo. Yes, very good. Okay, uh, a long request for those who will see that they are in the top five. Can you create a screenshot for that? Screenshot, take a photo. Top five. So you need to learn at coursebank.ph. We'll see how we can, you know, reward you for you know participating and being in the top five. Okay. Uh, thank you again, everyone. I'm sorry we're uh, three minutes. Actually, supposedly one and a half hours lang to. Uh, but thank you very much, everyone, for staying. Uh, we'll be keeping all of those questions in the chat uh, and in the doc that in the document that Ingrid sent. We'll still be answering all of those. This has been recorded, so we'll be posting also this session uh, in the discussion uh, forums that we have. Uh, so just keep on. Uh, you know, asking questions, uh, post that in the discussion board, and I'll uh, see you uh, in the next. Okay, so top 10, when I request top 10, if you're in the top 10, yes, screenshot top 10, turn it at, uh, send it to learn at course bank that page. Okay, thank you very much, everyone. I'll see you at the discussion forums. Thank you. Top 10. Ira, Ingrid, Rhea, thank you.